If you've ever wondered why the flight time going in one direction may be significantly different compared to the opposite direction, even though the distance traveled may be the same, or perhaps you may have wondered why aircraft experience turbulence at high altitudes in cloudless skies, then stay tuned because this is what we'll be exploring in today's video. Welcome back. In this video, we will be talking about a very interesting meteorological phenomenon called jet streams. We will specifically explore two areas, what creates jet streams and their significance in aviation. Now, before we do this, let's take a moment to understand the Earth's atmosphere and some of the layers that constitute it, as this will provide some context when we look at what creates jet streams in the first place. The atmosphere can be viewed as an ocean of air that rotates with the Earth and extends from the surface to the fringes of space at the top. It comprises of five layers. The lowest layer of the Earth's atmosphere is the troposphere, which extends from the surface of the Earth to an average height of about 11 kilometers. In the troposphere, the temperature reduces with an increase in height at an average rate of 2 degrees Celsius per 1000 feet. This layer is significant from an aviation standpoint because nearly all weather and almost all flying takes place in the troposphere. A little weather and some flying might even take place in the stratosphere, which is a layer above the troposphere. One of the properties of the troposphere is fluidity. You see, air acts like a fluid, which means it will always try to flow from high pressure to low pressure. Now, between the troposphere and the stratosphere, there is a boundary layer called the tropopause. This boundary line between the troposphere and the stratosphere becomes apparent when the temperature no longer reduces with an increase in height. What tends to happen is that warm air from the surface in the tropical regions is transported to higher levels in the troposphere and a bit into the tropopause. The reason why the air is warmer in the tropical regions is that there is a greater level of solar radiation that's incident on the Earth's surface. It's termed insulation. Now to explain this simply, the sun doesn't heat the whole Earth evenly. The sun's rays hit the area around the equator more directly which translates into a greater degree of heat absorption. At the higher latitudes, rays hit at an angle and some of the radiation bounces off the Earth's surface. This is why areas around the equator are hot and those around the poles are cold. Now as the surface around the equatorial or the tropical region heats, this warms the air that's exposed to it. Now, as we know, warm air is lighter than cold air and it rises to higher levels in the atmosphere, while the cooler air sinks down to replace warm air. Now, this movement of air masses can cause strong winds called jet streams. In other words, jet streams are formed when the thermal effects are very strong. Jet streams can be likened to a hollow flat tube through which air passes at high speeds. One open end of the tube is an entry and the other is an exit for the passing air. Here is an interesting fact about jet streams. Their typical dimensions tend to be 1,400 nautical miles long, 200 nautical miles wide and about 12,000 feet deep. And the wind speed must be greater than 16 knots for the airflow to be classified as a jet stream. Now in case you're wondering how the conversion from nautical mile to kilometer or mile works, one nautical mile is 1.852 kilometers and 1.15 mile. Jet streams in the troposphere typically travel from west to east and speeds well above 100 knots are quite common. In the region of East Asia, speeds can be up to 300 knots. Having looked at what creates jet streams, now let's dive into their significance in aviation, including the sort of hazards that they pose. 
We know that jet streams constitute high-speed winds. Airlines often take advantage of this at the flight planning stage, specifically when flying in the direction of the jet stream, which is usually from west to east. An aircraft flying inside a jet stream in the direction of its flow will witness a higher ground speed than its actual airspeed. This brings several benefits, such as fuel savings, less travel time, etc. Conversely, an aircraft that was flying inside a jet stream but against its flow would see a relatively slower flight because of the resistance posed by the jet stream. A simple way to exemplify this would be to imagine walking on a travelator. Let's consider the travelator was moving at a speed of 4 km an hour. If I was walking at a speed of 2 km an hour in the direction of the movement of the travelator, my effective speed would be 6 km an hour, so 4 plus 2. Contrarily, if I was walking at the same speed against the direction of the movement of the travelator, my effective speed would be 2 km an hour. The travelator in this example is analogous to a jet stream. This is why you may have noticed that at times the flight time in an easterly direction tends to be shorter as opposed to flying in a westerly direction. This is simply because of the upper level winds, including jet streams, which have an impact on the ground speed of an aircraft, which in turn affects the flight time, even though the distance flown may be exactly the same. The difference in flight times is more pronounced on medium to long haul flights. One of the aviation hazards that's often associated with jet streams is CAT or clear air turbulence. As the name suggests, CAT happens in clear air and is not associated with clouds. Around the boundaries of a jet stream, vertically and horizontally, there are strong wind shears in terms of wind speed which can cause clear air turbulence. Uh, wind shear is a change in wind direction and or speed over a short distance. CAT associated with jet streams can be severe and is strongest on the cold side of the jet stream. Alright, so there we have it. We've explored what creates jet streams and their significance in aviation. You see, weather forecasts today are quite reliable and when pilots review weather information at the pre-flight stage, they have a pretty good idea of where turbulence associated with jet streams and upper level winds is likely to be encountered uh, in terms of the horizontal and the vertical position. This information helps with the choice of flight levels to improve safety and enhance passenger comfort. I hope you found that of some value and it wasn't difficult to follow. As always, if you have any questions or comments or if you would like a certain topic related to aviation of flying covered please put that in the comments below and i will do my best to cover that in a future video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and share it along well thanks very much for your time and support and i look forward to seeing you in the next one again very soon thanks very much again and i wish you a great day